Some mother truckers are always trying to ice skate uphill. And that is the moral of Salem's Lot. Hello, friends. Now, I had heard from numerous sources that Salem's Lot was a unwatchable, absolutely abysmal, terrible movie that did not deserve to get made or watched by anybody that it had been dumped on streaming, and that it was completely atrocious. But I beg that if you look at it as Blade and Whistler's origin story, maybe it's not such a bad movie. So hear me out. We're going to go through a little bit of Salem's Lot, talk about a little bit of it, but in the meantime, I'm the man you may know as Z from Our Reviews Will Kill You. I would really appreciate a like and subscribe if you like the takes that you hear here. I guarantee you this is the only person who's going to talk about Blade in such a manner. Because I did my research and it's the only way certain plot points make sense. Because the main kid, Mark, does things that no child would ever do unless he was Blade. So anyway, let's, let's take a look. First, we'll look at uh, just in general, an hour 53 minutes. And as I did in my very brief 10 second review of this, this was an 80s movie released in 2004. It's paced like an 80s movie, it has all of the trappings of an 80s movie. Uh, they, the, the effects look like an 80s movie, like, there's nothing super spectacular about it. The other thing that's very interesting to me about it, and I've read the book by Stephen King, it's very dated. We've seen a lot better vampire movies like 30 Days of Night and, you know, Salem's Lot might have been okay and spooky in the 80s, but this it just ain't going to cut it. I do like the throwback, like the vampires have like this shine in their eyes and I thought that was very cool, but uh, it's not very scary, it's not super interesting, and... Uh, it's just an okay movie. If you want to see a young black man go in and take care of business, like I said, prequel to Blade. And uh, and I will spoil the movie because one of my main points is how it's Whistler and Blade. Because <laughs> they ain't got nowhere to go. So anyway, 49% by the critics, 42% by the fans. Everybody seems to agree. I think they're all taking the wrong perspective on this one. Uh, author Ben Mears returns to his childhood home of Jerusalem's Lot in search of inspiration for his next book. That's not why he came. I think he came back, they say that he came back to uh, uncover what happened with his parents who were killed in a car accident, which they never discuss. They mention it once and never go back to. Uh, only to discover his hometown is being preyed on by blood for a thirsty vampire. A bloodthirsty vampire. Hey, hey, people. Critic consensus, an old-fashioned spook fest, exactly like I said. This Salem's Lot won't be the definitive adaptation of Stephen King's famed vampire tale, but it makes for a solid reintroduction to a new generation. I genuinely think that this is a dated Steve, uh, Stephen King book. I remember reading it, feeling like it was a little dated, and uh, now that I've seen a movie of it, I 100% think it's a little dated. You can almost see the scissor marks on some of the scenes that the producer decided could be tighter. This thing has been cut so many times that it bled to death. Uh, yeah, I, I, I get that. I get all of that. So according to the director, and this is from Bloody Disgusting, Gary Dauberman's initial Sam's lot was three hours long and included the Marston House opening. Yeah, it's been like a long time since I read the book, so I have no idea. I don't know that anyone's ever going to ask to see the three-hour cut of this. Especially from director Gary Dowerman, Annabelle Comes Home. Yeah, buddy, I'm excited to see your three-hour cut of this. He said, this is from Den of Geek, my first cut was about three hours. That left a lot out. My first draft of the script was 180-odd pages or something because you're trying to include everything. And that includes secondary characters that I spoke about. So it's sad to see the stuff go, but it's like a necessary evil. One of the scenes trimmed is uh, Ben Mears, the main guy. We'll just call him Whistler for now. Encountering a Depression-era hitman, Hubert Marston, in the eerie Marston house, later person by Kurt Barlow. 
for his antique shop. In the book, Ben sinks in the Marston house. He sees the ghost of Hubert Marston. Yeah, I don't care. I don't remember that from the book. Thus, I do not care. And it is not that interesting. Um, yeah. Who cares? Not super interesting. So there was more of this. I don't know that that makes it any better. Definitely don't know that. Um, it did actually, as far as actors go, I wanted to make a, I think Alfie, what's her name? She's a good actress. And, uh, but she's uh dollar store, Viola Davis, uh, Alfre. She doesn't even get credit in this. Of course, James Wan was a producer of this. They don't even give the, the actual actors a lot of credit here, which is not very nice. Alfre Woodard, who's always good. Uh, but I liked her in uh, Luke Cage. But they uh, don't give her a lot to work with here. She's like a doctor and, and things happen. Essentially, people don't believe there's vampires. And then all of a sudden there's like vampires on everybody's roofs. And then I'm like, I guess there's vampires in this. Oh my gosh. This is from Variety. Salem's Lot Review. After two years on the shelf. Yeah, it's set for two years. Stephen King's vampire do-over is mediocre to the max. I know Stephen King was mad about it. He wanted it to come out sooner and said, this should be released to theaters. I think it would have made like $20 million in theaters. I don't know what the budget on it was, but I I don't think it would be a hit. That's for sure. I guess it's very dated. Unless you go back and say that this is the uh, order story of Blade and Whistler. Just saying. This is actually Salem's Lot is King Stephen uh, Stephen King's second novel. Didn't even know that. <clears throat> it's like, what if an outbreak of vampirism struck your community? Uh, they just say it's not that good because it's uh, like I said, paced like an eighties movie. Not very exciting. Uh, they do kill children. That's a thing. They don't usually kill children. They kill them in this one. Not very excitingly, but they do get killed. So that's a thing. That's a that's a, a plus. Uh, but, but, but they're just rehashing the entire thing here. It's a by the book adaptation. Yes, with a few diversity minded improvements. Why is diversity an improvement and a plot twist or two or three? I don't know about that. Oh, yeah. I mean, there was some interesting points to it, but diver m diversity makes my movie better. I don't know if I agree it, agree with that, but you know what I do agree with? And I just want to sink the point home here. You give Frost a message for me. You tell him it's open season on all suckheads. <laughs> and the best one of all. Some motherfuckers are always trying to ice skate up hill. They always are. So, okay, here's why I make this point. So, essentially, the main kid, his friends all get killed. His name is Mark. And as soon as he uncovers that his friend is a vampire, and the funny thing about this movie is, like, nobody can seem to believe that there are vampires. They just go, uh, you know, the fact that a cross is glowing in front of a vampire, you would think that that would get people to believe you because i've never seen a cross glow in, in my life so watching a cross glow like very brightly and not only does it glow but it like throws the vampires like out of the buildings and you still have to invite them in and they follow these like old-fashioned rules so the vampire they they don't do a great job of establishing the vampire rules but whatever um so mark is Dead set on his friends that he's met for all of like two days. He's going to release them from this curse of death or undeath that they've been put under. So he literally goes into the head vampire's home by himself to take out the head vampire. Right? So once he goes into the head vampire's house, uh, this other guy who's trying to help them meets him there. That guy ends up getting killed. And the kid ends up going to a church. And he's like, yeah, I need to stock up on supplies. So he like gets he gets holy water, which he never uses, by the way. They make a point of him filling up a, a holy water bottle. And he, he never actually uses it. Uh, but then he is like, I'm going to go back and kill the main vampire again. Uh, but it's actually, instead of that, he goes to his parents' house. 
and doesn't stop any vampires from killing his parents. But he's like, yeah, I'm going to go kill this vampire because he killed my parents. And then it's him and the, the main guy who's like the writer, who's definitely Whistler. And the two of them take out the main vampire together. Of course, the kid has the most to do with it. Uh, but the kid has no child I've ever seen in any movie or in real life would have the stones to go down into a basement open up a coffin to kill a vampire i just don't see that happening he's gonna stake him right in the heart <laughs> this kid and he does actually in fact stake his like little best friend so this kid's got uh you know he's either daywalker or he's got balls of steel either way i think he's blade because he's just getting rid of some sook heads so that makes the story slightly more interesting. If you think about it in a different way, that this is Blade's origin story, I believe you'll enjoy it a little bit better than the 49% that everybody else did. Otherwise, you're going to see a really dated movie with some okay scenes. And if you're really bored and it's October, obviously, you want to watch a horror movie, yeah, go ahead and catch it. It's not too bad. You're not going to be totally angry at yourself, but I can see why they tried to shelve it. It's not super coherent. There's clearly a lot of edits in here. Uh, but it's not as bad as everybody said. I was literally expecting this to be unwatchable. And I was like, oh, that wasn't completely unwatchable. So take my word for it. Again, it's open season on some suck heads. Some mother truckers always try to skate up hell. Bring back Blade. This is his origin story. His parents are killed by vampires, right? We watched it happen in this movie. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I know I'm right. I know I'm the only one with this take in the entire... I don't think anybody else has said this take in the entire world. I'm going to say it. I mean, maybe one person who's in Venezuela thinks the same thing. But not in America. Not in America. Anyway, thanks for listening. Love all y'all. I appreciate it. But I'm on to the next one. Thanks for catching the video. Be sure to join our channel to get the education you deserve. Make sure you check out our shorts, live streams, and catch us on all the socials. Don't forget to like and subscribe.